Well, my name is Dr. Andrew Hahn, and this is the 21st episode of the podcast, Guided Self-Healing, Fearless Living. And this episode is called, What to Listen for When You're Listening to a Session. And it's really about the framework and the protocol that I'm going to be using because I'm going to start doing live sessions with people. And if you would like to be on a live session with me, all you have to do is write to me at a h a h n, so a han at lifecenteredtherapy.com. And what you need to know, of course, is if you do a session with me, it will be on a podcast. So you at that point need to know that you're making an agreement, which I will ask you to put in writing, that it's okay for you to um, you give permission for us to put the podcast out there. And uh, the one thing I will say to you is that if for any reason at the end of our podcast, you don't want it going out, uh, you can always veto it. Um, No one has ever done that yet, but you know, there's a first time for everything. And some people find, you know, that it's too personal, but generally speaking, um, they, whatever they is, we could say soul doesn't typically let me even work with someone where that's likely to happen. But at the end of the day, it is your life and you get to choose. So I want to tell you when I do these sessions, what you ought to listen for, because that will make the listening far more interesting. So I start every session by inviting people to take a moment, because often they'll come into me and they'll be still in their surface lives. And they get to see me fairly infrequently. Like if you do something with me, it'll be a one-time thing. So, or likely to be a one-time thing. If you wanna keep working with me, that's entirely possible. Um, Or if you wanna work with someone, that's totally possible. Who does this work? But anyway, so what I invite people to do, which I'll invite you to do right now, is to pause for a second and to bring your attention from up and out to down and in, or if it's more meaningful to you, to in and down, and take about three or four deep breaths, if you can, all the way into the diaphragm. And what I invite people to do, if it's meaningful to them, is when they're breathing in, it's like, almost like breathing in not just air, but life itself. And the way we breathe in life itself is it's, we bring our attention to the crown of our head, and we just experience or imagine it softening and opening and flowing with energy, what is the animating force of life? It's like you might experience light or feel a tingling or sense a heightened vibration coming in through the crown of your head and all through your body. And that is really opening to life and to everything that's here. So in the in-breath, we open receptively to everything that's here. And on the out-breath, we just let go of whatever tension there is. So we can let go of whatever tension there is in the body. We can let go of any reactivity. So we can just be with whatever is here. That's our work, just to be present with whatever is here without judging it. But anything you're suffering about, any joy you have, anything, okay? And then I invite people and I'll invite you also as you're breathing as far down as you can, hopefully into the diaphragm, which will be calming and energizing breathing to bring your attention even further down. So it's like you'll feel your uh, attention going from your torso down through your torso, down through your legs and right through the soles of your feet. So it's like you're getting sort of not only centered, but grounded and rooted. And it's like literally from that point of view, it's like you're a tree and you're sending down roots, which of course holds mother earth. We also receive from the mother and we feel held and we feel sustained and we feel nourished and nurtured. And we take that energy back up through the soles of the feet and right up through our legs and into our root chakra and then throughout our whole being. So I generally do a shortened version of that for anybody who has a session. And then all I invite them to do is two things. I invite them to bring their attention as far down as they can, really into their gut, which is the part of them and the part of all of us that just knows what's true for us and what's truly important to share. So it's like we're gonna listen to a deeper part of us that just knows, it doesn't figure things out, it just knows. And then we bring our attention a little bit up into the center of chest and we just bring our attention to the soft voice that when we really listen, 
it knows if we ask what we truly desire and what we aspire to, if we could have whatever we intend, even if we're not sure it's possible. So it's like, instead of going from the top down and starting with our heads and trying to figure something out about what's true for us, we know is true for us and what we want. We know that the head doesn't know those things. The head basically is the last place we go, which is once we truly know what is important for us. And when we truly know, we've listened to what it is we truly desire and aspire to, then the head comes in as a servant to say, maybe I can be discerning enough to help facilitate that, to help make it more possible. That's the role of the head. So I tell people this. So I tell them just to listen to whatever it is they know is true for themselves and is important to share and whatever it is they desire or aspire to if they can have anything that they desire or intend to. And then what I would invite them to do and I invite you to do also is slow down enough that it's like not only you're going to be sharing something, but it's like you're going to be sharing something. It's like these deeper parts of you are sharing something through you, with you, and then with me, and then with life. So I invite people to speak slowly enough that not only are they sharing, but they're speaking slowly enough that they can listen to their own words. So it's like you're really sharing something from a deeper part of yourself to the one you identify with. In my case, of course, Andy. So having said that, um, then what I do, <clears throat> having said that, is I invite people to answer one question, which is if you could have anything you desire from our time, even if you're not sure it's possible, what would you really intend to get? So that you would say, I got exactly what I wanted. And uh, if I have ongoing clients, I'll ask them if there's something they want to share. But basically, I just ask them what they want. And then they can have anything. And they can say it's one thing. They can say it's 10 things. And I write down verbatim exactly what they say. And the reason for that is you get exactly what you ask for. And sometimes you aren't aware of what you're asking for. So we have to make sure that what you intend to ask for and what in fact you are literally asking for are the same thing. And if they're not the same thing, that's a lot of information. Okay, so I'll write down everything you say and try to see if it's quantifiable. So if you say, I want my headache to go away, that's pretty quantifiable. If you say, I want a better relationship, that may not be quantifiable until you define how you would know if you had a better relationship. Most of the time, people ask for something fairly quantifiable. They say, I don't want to be anxious when I'm speaking in front of crowds, or I want my major depression to go away, or I want my allergies to go away, or I want, I have a dream and I really feel powerful, but somehow I seem to be getting in my own way about making my dream come true, or I see something going on in my relationship with my significant other and I can't stop it and I've seen it over and over again, and I can't stop it. So, and whatever you write down, I'm gonna write it down and try to number them as separate intentions. So in that case, it'd be about five of them, right? And then we start in. And again, the way we start in is, <clears throat> I'll start doing muscle testing. And the way the muscle testing looks is I'll just say, show us a yes, and my body will go forward and show us a no, my body will go back, show us a yes. So, and then I'm gonna surrogately muscle test for whoever it is that I'm doing the session with. Of course, if it's live and I do a session live, I'll actually literally be muscle testing them. And uh, I can usually feel right away. It's like I really attune to someone. And it's sort of like what I say to people is, they say, how can you do that? And I say, well, the way I do that is sort of the same way that when I invite you to become a sensation, it's like you're an actor who's playing a role in a play. And if you bring your attention enough to any discomfort and choose to become it, your new name becomes sick to stomach feeling or headache or tightening chest or closing throat. And so you become that being literally. And I think that being is a literal being whose name is sick to stomach. It's not I'm sick to my stomach any more than you are, you know, I'm not 
you're Andy or the Andy, right? I'm just Andy and its name is sick to stomach. And what I do is the same thing with you because you could say you are in relationship to life as a dense energy, as any dense energy you can feel in your body is in relationship to you. And if I can attune to the template, I can choose to literally bring all my attention to you like I'm bringing it to a sensation. And then it's like, I choose to enroll myself as you and then I start muscle testing and if your name is Sammy I'd say my name is Sammy it would say yes I'd say my name is Andy it would say no and then I'm essentially muscle testing Sammy whoever Sammy is and if your name is Sammy that might be interesting but be that as it may all right so I start muscle testing and we've talked about muscle testing before you can listen to that podcast if you're interested we did a whole podcast on four levels of wisdom and muscle testing and I won't go through that again all right so then what I do is I start asking questions and the first question I ask is whoever you are right do you know the best way to proceed and we ask you and invariably the answer to that is no because if people knew the best way to proceed and knew what to do they wouldn't be coming to see me Rarely it says they do know, but they just didn't know that they knew. But most of the time it says that I know. So I'll then ask, am I to find out? And if it says yes, I say, are we to do healing? Yes. And if it says yes, I'll say, are we to do a standard balance? And most of the time, although not all of the time, it says we are to do a standard balance. Now, what does a standard balance mean? We're in step one of a five-step protocol. And we're starting out, and the first thing we have to find out in step one is why are you here? What's the most important thing to work on? And do all parts give permission? And the way we find that out is you've given me like these five intentions. And what I will do is it says, if we're to do a standard balance, I will know that something is out of balance. And if that's all we're to do, I'll know we're not to work on anything else like mastery or maturity or opening to new perspectives or a whole variety of other things. All we're going to do is focus on the thing where you're blocked. So you're suffering in some way. And we have to alleviate the suffering so you can be free. And again, what I want to say is freedom means one of two things. It either means your symptoms that are associated with the thing that couldn't be handled go away, or your relationship to whatever those symptoms are changes to such a degree that you're not suffering about the symptoms. You may not like them, but you won't be judging them. You won't be comparing yourself to other people. You won't be compulsively needing to know. You'll just say, it is what it is. And it's part of life. And when you're there, you're free. Okay. So that's what I guarantee people. And then I say, is it any, some, or all of what you said? And if it says yes, then I'll say, is it one of the things made up of one of them? Because sometimes it's one made up of three of them. And that means three things that look like they're different are all the same. And sometimes it says it's everything you said. But let's say it says it's one made up of one. So I'll say out of the five things you said, you know, your anxiety about speaking in front of crowds and your depression and your allergies and your not having, you know, you have this intention, but it's not happening. And I don't know what the last one I said was because I didn't write it down, but it's going to be one of them. And then I always ask first of the client now. So I say, could you go in and find out which of the five things you said is the one we need to work on? If it says no, then I'll say, do I find it? And if it says yes, then what I will do is, let's say it's one of them only, I'll run the list. And when we get to the right answer, I'm going to go backwards and I can quickly do this and I don't have to, yes, no, it's just, a, it's just running you know, a number, right? It's not asking a yes, no question. It's just, a, 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 I'm asking one, two, three, four, five. So it's one, no, two, no, three, yes, four, no. So we, whatever number three is, which in this case, I think was allergies. So it says out of everything in the universe, we have to work on allergies and we don't even have a choice because it says that's the doorway into something or it's foundational to something. So that would be what's going on. Now, let's suppose it says it's none of the things that the client says. So I say, is it any, some, or all of it? You say it says no. Then what I'd say is, could you go in and find it and we ask you? And most of the time it says no to that. And if it says no, then I ask if I'm to find it. And if it says yes, I ask if I'm to find it intuitively. In this case, it said no. So then I say, is it some kind of pattern we're looking for? And a pattern is a universal theme. And um, it says you're stuck in some universal theme and the things that you think are your intentions are really symptoms of this universal theme, betrayal, neglect, being cursed, protecting yourself, whatever it's gonna be. 
And then I will find out which one it is. And the way I do that is I ask how many, is it one pattern made up of one? And it says yes. So that means it's not gonna be neglect and betrayal. It's only gonna be one thing. And then I say, is it a pattern standard, life-centered therapy pattern in a standard form? And it says yes. And that means we've looked at about 27 patterns, but clearly other people look at patterns too, like Jung looks at patterns. And Freud obviously had a pattern called the Oedipal. And Jung typically looks at what are called identity archetypes, which are things where you're traumatized around a role. But here we have these three patterns. We have three categories of patterns called single center patterns and triple center patterns and identity patterns. And if it says it's one pattern made up of one, I'll do a quick diagnostic and I'll find out what it is. And I would say, is it a single center pattern? No. Is it a major energetic pattern? Yes. Is it an identity pattern? No. And major energetic patterns, which are these universal themes, they cause us to believe things that we know on a deeper level aren't true, that keep us from feeling feelings and being a choice about expression and create boundary problems all around one theme. And then I'll say, is it in the material realms? And I'll say yes. And is it in the non-material realms? And we'll say no in, that, in this case, which means it's a trauma you can experience through your five senses. And then I'll find out what it is and I'll go through a list and I'll say split, no, multiple, no, neglect, no, grudge, no, death wish, yes. So I would know diagnostically that the thing we most need to work on is a death wish. And somehow I would know, since this is in part one and it said, we can't in this case work on any of your intentions. We know that your anxiety about speaking in front of crowds and your depression and your allergies and your bad relationship and your having a dream, but sabotaging yourself are all folded into wanting to die. All right, so that's what we would know. So I would ask before I do anything else, I would say, is this the highest intention to a balance, to bring into balance something about a death wish? And if it says yes, then I will say, do we say, have this person say an inducting statement? If it says yes, I will have them say typically the core statement of a death wish, although there are many possible statements, but the core statement is a part of me wants to die. And if it's, if I'm doing this remotely, like I would be with you, I would have you say that out loud and I'd muscle test it. And if it says yes, I would say, even if that doesn't make any rational sense to you, when you really let yourself fully, with all your conviction experience, a part of me wants to die, does that resonate with you? And invariably it does, but if it doesn't, there are things I do. But if it does, then we know what we need to work on most, which is a part of me wants to die. And that would be it. But it may say, like I said, that we're gonna work on one thing, which would be allergies, right? So now we're done with part one. Then we go to part two, which is, do we need to have clues or do we need to do something first? That's part two. Do we have to do something prior to, to get more information about the theme or to do something that would be underlying the theme, whatever it is, or the intention before we do it? And so there are two questions I ask there. I ask, are we gonna work on it directly? And if it says, yes, we're done. That just means I'm gonna work on whatever we find in step one. Step two says, there's no other clues. If it says, are we gonna work on it directly? And it says, no, I ask two questions. The first is, does your intention, your allergies have the structure of one or more of our patterns? Let's say it says, yes. That would mean we need a clue. It's, they're an exact equal sign. So your allergies, let's say it equal the death wish let's say it equaled it, right? Well, what that would say is that we should be hearing a story where your allergies and your anxiety or suffering about your allergies and your wanting to die are an exact equivalent. They are exactly the same thing. The wanting to die and having allergies are the same thing. And then you might find a story where something, you know, you couldn't, because what is an allergy? Essentially, it's like the world is a dangerous place and I don't know who's safe and who isn't. And, you know, that's an allergy. And I would know that that would have something to do with either an awful death or wanting to die or something. And then I would have you put those two things together. I would have you, when we get there, I would have you feel in your body what happens with allergies and wanting to die. And those sensations would be it. So let's suppose it says it's a death wish and allergies. And now we're done with step two because we now know what you're working on. We have 100% permission and we know that your allergies and wanting to die are the same thing. Now we go to step three and step three typically is gaining information. It's information about where we need to go, which is typically root cause, where it originated because everything after that is an echo. And 
uh, it also, we get information, do you need any kind of practices? So I would say the first thing is, is the next thing to do to get information about story? And if it says yes, then those questions are who, what, when, where, why, how, and if you've been working with me for a while, is it a story you already know? So let's suppose it says, I have to find out one of those things and it's gonna be um, when. All right, so the first question that I would ask is when it, I have to find out when this originated, when was the point of origin where your allergies began which is also the same moment that you were experiencing, I want to die for the first time. And I'd say, does it originate in your lifetime? And it says, yes. And if I say, does it originate in another lifetime? It will say no. So it means it's not, you're being reincarnated. It's not somebody in your bloodline. It's something that happened to you. And then I can find out, is there more where to find about when? And if that is the case, it's usually how old you are. And I would just start running because it says you need that clue. So I'm gonna start just finding out and I'd say, when we get to the right answer, I'm going to go back. Conception of birth, no. Birth, no. So it's not a birth trauma. Just after birth to five. So that would be yes. So it's something that happened right after you were born till you were five years old, which means up through, you know, uh, your fifth birthday, zero to five. And it says yes. Then I can say, do we need to know anything more? And it says no. And I can say then, you have a clue, which is that your allergies and wanting to die is a story that crystallized somewhere between right after you were born and five years old. And then I can find out, do we need any practices? And it says no. So that means we don't have to find any practices now and you have a clue. So now we're done with step three, which is preparing for a journey, essentially. We found out where we're going and we found out you don't need to do anything except for sharing the story. So then I'm gonna have you share the story and how am I gonna do that? Well, we've, we've already had you do an induction, you know, where part of me wants to die and we already have allergies. So I'm gonna to say to you, as you're fully allowing, which you are right now are allergies and a part of you that's experiencing I wanna die, scan your body. Just tell me what you're noticing. And we're looking for sensations like pain or queasiness or tightness or hard to breathe or whatever it's going to be. And there will be a sensation because we know that whenever something can't be handled in that moment, a discomfort is born. And so discomfort is going to be born in that moment. And I'm going to have you find it. Let's say you say, oh, my throat's closing up. It's hard for me to breathe. I'm having trouble breathing. I would then say, okay. So what you're going to choose to do is you're going to become the sensation you're calling hard to breathe. And you're gonna to choose to focus on it so much that it's like you're gonna become it from the inside out. And you know, that's like becoming, a, if you're an actor, it's like you're gonna to choose to play a role. You're gonna enroll yourself. And in that role, right, your, your new name is hard to breathe. You're in a story and your new name is hard to breathe. And we know that hard to breathe is a younger version of you somewhere between just after birth and age five. So we also know, and if I was doing this on myself, hard to breathe and young Andy who's experiencing allergies and wanting to die are all the same thing. So I bring all my attention to hard to breathe and I say, oh my God, it's, I'm having a hard time breathing. Oh my God, I can see it's like someone's putting a pillow on my head and they're smothering me and it's like, I can't, I'm having such a hard time breathing and then I can't get out of it because I'm so little. And then the door opens and they stop, thank God. And I won't tell you who it was, but so, um, and what I know right then is what, that my allergies and my wanting to die are around, uh, this someone trying to smother me when I'm in the toddler. And then I ask, are there any practices? And it says no, which means we've got the whole story, right? And we don't need any more practices other than sharing the story while we're choosing to become the one who's sharing it and then witnessing and holding them, which is why what we're doing as a witness for the younger me in this case, right? And then we asked, we have to make any connections? And it says, yes. And so I would say to myself, well, what's the connection between my allergies and my wanting to die and the story? And then I would say, oh my God, you know, 
who who did this to me was supposed to love me, but they didn't love me. It's, and now I'll never feel secure in the world. And anything could be dangerous, like even especially things that shouldn't be dangerous at all could be dangerous. Right? Allergies, wanting to die. That's the connection. And if I got the connection, then that would be it. And then we're done with that, right? We've got the whole story. We don't need any more practices. And we have found out the connection, which is all great. So then I'm going to find out if we balance the original intention. And I'll say, have we balanced the original intention 100% at all levels? And we'll say yes. And um, then I will ask, we have to check levels for the intention, but particularly if you're not there, that won't happen. But if it does happen, I'll just say my allergies are cleared and I no longer in that context or experience and I want to die. That's taken care of. But what I really want to know is what happened to the sensation. And you'll say, oh my God, I can breathe again. I can breathe easily. And then you'll know something was different because a few minutes ago, you basically were being feeling like you're being suffocated and you almost couldn't breathe at all. And suddenly you can breathe easily again. So we know at that point something has changed because you've told me that something has changed. You can feel it in your body right away. And then we go to the conclusion. We ask a whole lot of questions. Are there any lessons to learn? And then we ask about 12 questions. Withdrawal, which means you've done such a deep piece of work that you are a little bit lightheaded or limitation, which means something can unravel the work. So if you had somebody, for example, who's maternal to you, you might have a reaction to them and it would unravel. And we ask a whole series of questions. One of the biggest ones we ask is what something called future pacing. And future pacing means now that you're not traumatized anymore, let yourself fully experience what it's like in every circumstance where the world is no longer dangerous and you know you can be discerning about you know, who you can count on and who is dangerous so you don't have to protect yourself against everything. And what I would have you do is feel that in your body right now. And you might say, oh my God, my chest feels really light. And then I'd say, all right, bring all your attention to light chest and now experience and imagine every circumstance and how it's gonna be different now that we've done this work. That's called future pacing. And we ask a lot of questions like that. And then when we're done, we see if you have to affirm it. And if it says no, that means everybody's lined up. And if it says yes, then you have to make a statement from your heart about what you're agreeing to. And if, if it says that, you'll say something like, you know, I agree to like go out into the world discerning but not afraid and knowing that I can know that the world may be dangerous, but it may not be dangerous and that I'll know something about who I can trust and who I should be wary of. Okay, then it's affirmed. And I ask sort of like deepest wisdom, higher self guides, anything else. Is there anything more I want to share for your healing and highest good for the young one and for all? It says no. And then I say, is the work complete and are we done? And if it says yes, then I would ask you, whoever you are, is there anything you want to share about what touched you or what that was like or what you took from it or anything you want to remember? And it's an invitation, not an obligation. So if there is anything you say, I'll share it. And if you want to just sit quietly, sit quietly. And then because we'll want to know if this works, we'll want to know, um, just I'll say, just be skeptical, like the null hypothesis, assume nothing changed. And then I'd just like you to ask, you know, 15 seconds at the end of every day, am I noticing a difference in my allergies? And am I noticing that I'm more, able to go out into the world and not be so afraid. And then, you know, because you want to know if it, worked, if it worked or not, and then we're done. And the only thing I'll say to you is there are a few gems. The first thing is I always ask if you know first, and if you don't know, I'll find out for you. The second thing is everything is literal. So in this case, right, um, you're having a hard time breathing, right? And you had allergies. And what we'd say is that's a clue to the thing that couldn't be handled. In this case, the sense of being someone trying to kill you by suffocating you. So it's very interesting that the symptoms you're suffering about causes to suffer on a surface level, but they're also an invitation to remembering whatever it is you need to remember, which is always great. And the last thing I wanna say is you can't step outside of the process. So if you say like, you know, I'm not seeing anything and you think you're saying something about you can't do the process, really probably what's happened is a pillow's over your face and you can't see anything because someone's trying to smother you. So I'll just say, that's right. You're not seeing anything yet.
And it's the same thing with the sensation. If I ask what the sensation is, and you say, I'm not feeling anything, of course, what I'll say to you is, where in your body are you feeling? I'm not feeling anything. And people can answer that question. So that's what you need to listen to. And it's really that simple. And then everything else is gonna be a jazz riff. And of course, the key is that the person who is the client, you could say is life as it's revealing itself through a dense energy through you to you. So my job as the facilitator is to know, you know, the framework and to know about life and to know the protocol. The client's job or whoever I'm guiding is to be a, an expert reporter on life as it's revealing itself through them, with them, and with life. And life is the one who reveals everything and does all the healing anyway. So that's a quick journey through what we're going to be doing when we do this. And of course, having said that, I'd love any reflections, any questions, you know, there's some very interesting things here. Like the first is that I don't do regressions at all because I'm not regressing you. I'm having you find someone who's already here, whose name is, you know, difficulty breathing. So I'm not regressing you back to that toddler. I'm saying you're going to be the witness and that toddler is here right now, which makes a whole lot of difference because of course, if I was regressing you, you would become the toddler not by choice in a funny way, but just by reliving it. Whereas this time you'd be choosing to relive it even if you got it kinesthetically, at which point you would live it out, but you'd be choosing to do it. And that makes all the difference because in my experience, if you choose to become the sensation, you will either relive it, at which point you'll say, oh, I can't breathe, but you'll have chosen to be that role or you'll see an image of it or you'll just know what's happening, but you'll know it isn't you you'll know it's a young you who you're choosing to be with. And that, as I say, makes all the difference. So if you want to do a session with me, all you have to do is write to me. And again, my name is Andy Hahn. My email address is A-H-A-H-N at lifecenteredtherapy.com. And if you want to know more about us, just go to lifecenteredtherapy.com because you can do this work. And if you don't do it with me as a demonstration, we have all kinds of people, including me, who you can do it with. So until next time, thank you so much for listening and we'll be doing some sessions. Bye.